It is a great thing to serve the Lord, working in the light of God. All right, people of God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, the choir brings you a prayer, and I want you to say that prayer with us. Just say in your heart, just say it out loud. Lord, order my steps this year, 2018. Can you say that? Lord, order my steps. Lord, order my feet. Lord, guide my feet. Lord, wash my heart. Lord, show me how to talk. Lord, show me how to walk. Lord, when I need a brand new, brand new song to sing, show me how to let your praises ring. Can we say that? And may the good Lord hear our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Senior Pastor for the privilege to share the word this morning. God has been so awesome in this place, and God has blessed us in diverse ways. So I count it an honor to stand before God's holy people to share the word. I pray that God will bless us this morning. Thank you very much, sir, for praying for me yesterday, my wife. I took that prayer, and I will keep meditating on those words until I share the testimonies. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we pray together this morning? I want you to talk to God to bless you. Through the vehicle of his word. Father, we are privileged to come into your presence unhindered. Thank you for your love for us. We ask this morning, are there people that have come before you hurting? Are there men and women with questions unanswered? Father, provide answers for them. Bring healings to your people. Encourage us, edify us by the word we will hear this morning that none of us will go out the same way we came. Let there be encounter with you, our Father, so that your name is glorified in this place. We exalt you, Holy Spirit. We ask that you take charge of the word I will speak. Use this mouth of clay to declare only your counsel that your people might be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to put a good hand as you sit down before his mighty presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll be sharing with us on faith for divine acceleration. Faith for divine acceleration. We will take a reading from Mark chapter 11, verse 12. Mark chapter 11, verse 12. Let us not forget our text, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. And we are taking the first reading in Mark chapter 11, verse 12. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar of having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4. I read verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 to 3. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sown in my wrath. If they shall enter into my rest, 
although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Amen. Faith for divine acceleration. It is an all-time strategy of the enemy to always attack the world when God speaks it directly or when he inspires his people to speak the word. In Genesis chapter 2, we read in verse 15, when God placed the man in the garden of Eden, God gave the man an instruction and said, of all the fruit in the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat, for in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. That was the instruction, the command that God gave man in the garden of Eden. And in verse 1 of chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Immediately after God gave the instruction, in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 3, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Immediately God gave the instruction and spoke to Adam, the enemy came against the word. And he said, Has God said? The servant spoke to the woman, and the woman spoke to the serpent, never engage in a conversation with the enemy. Never go into dialogue with Satan. What the Bible says we should do is to what? Resist him steadfastly in the faith. And the woman twisted the instruction that God gave. That was what happened to the first Adam. In Matthew chapter 3, Verse 16, the second Adam also was confronted with the same attack on the word. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible says in verse 16, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Bible said the heavens were opened unto him this morning. The heaven will open over someone this morning. In the name of Jesus. It is possible to be in your congregation and the heavens are open over you while the next person to you might not know exactly what is happening. I'm assured in my heart that the heavens are open over us. In chapter 4 verse 1, Then Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The same attack. This is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. And in chapter 4, the enemy came. If thou be the son of God, command these stones to become bread. The same attack again on the word of God. 
In Matthew 16 again, the same thing happened when Jesus in verse 21 began to show his disciples how he will go into Jerusalem and suffer and be killed, but on the third day be raised again. Immediately he declared the mysteries of his coming to his disciples. The Bible said Peter took him aside and rebuked him. And he said to Peter, he turned and said, get behind me, Satan. Again, attack on the word he just shared with his disciples through the same vessel that was just used by the Holy Spirit to reveal to them who Jesus was. What am I saying? Anytime there is a declaration of the word of God through God's servant or God speaking directly, there is always an attack on the word. Why is Satan attacking the word? The word of God is the victory for the believer. First John chapter 5 verse 4, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. How do we overcome the world? By faith. How does faith come? By the word. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the word of God is the victory of the believer. It is the weapon of the believer. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, is an armor. So if the devil does not disorient the believer against the word, victory for the believer is sure. So he attacks the word so that he can weaken the believer. This morning, we know all of his strategies the same. And I assure you this morning, by faith in the word of God, you were an overcomer. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That's our victory, the word of God. is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. With it, we walk in faith. Faith and hope are not the same. Faith is giving substance to what we believe. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible said, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is giving substance to the things we hope for. It is what lays hold on things that are in the realm of the Spirit, that brings them into the reign of the fiscal. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible tells us that. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Places in other translation means things. You can read it this way. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly things in Christ. Your car is in heaven. Your husband on the scripture is in heaven. But you are on the earth. As long as our blessings are in the realm of the spirit, we cannot lay hold on them and enjoy until they are translated in the realm we can use. Your health and healing have been done. In this scripture, he said, he had blessed us. Past tense. Faith is in the past tense and the present tense. Hope is in the future tense. Because hope does not have substance. It says, I believe I will get it someday. That is hope. And we cannot receive from God by hope. We receive from God by faith. So faith is 
in the present, according to Hebrews chapter 11. That is why the new birth actually is a rebirth of the spirit. It's not the rebirth of the mind, neither is it the rebirth of the physical body. Only our spirits were recreated. So God's communication with man actually is through the spirit. And man is a spirit. He has a soul, but lives in a physical body. So the mind must be renewed by the word of God and the body must be subjected to obey the spirit. This morning, you will operate by faith and not just hope. But faith has a love connection. Faith is energized and put in motion by love. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. Without love, you cannot walk in faith. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have no charity, it profited me what? Nothing. In the garden, God gave man one command. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In our generation, God gave us one do not command. Do not go out of love. Every of God's truths are linked to love. For you to operate faith and receive divine acceleration, love must be understood and practiced. Becoming established in the love of God and freely receiving that love is key to working in divine acceleration of faith. The opposite of faith is hope. I mean, is, is fear. And fear is lack of love. A child that is not sure of the parent's love will be afraid of the parent. So if believers are convinced without any shadow of doubt that God loves them and cares for their welfare, finance, health, and all of the things that make life worth living, faith can easily flow. There are believers that the devil has lied to them that God does not love them. The death of Christ on the cross is the ultimate proof that God loves us. So don't believe the lies of the devil. God loves you. Actually, the contradictory circumstances that we go through are not evidence that God do not, does not love us. They are actual evidences that he loves us. Even though we would have been killed by now by those plans and strategies of the wicked. But we are still alive this morning. Tell your neighbor, God loves you. Say loudly, God loves me. In the name of Jesus. So these obstacles, they are bondages, roadblocks that we must remove to fully experience divine acceleration. Legally, it's done. But we want to vitally walk in divine acceleration. That will require faith. And faith is the word. In Jude verse 20. Jude verse 20. The Bible says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. 
holy faith. There are about four different kinds of faith the Bible talks about. One is the fruit of faithfulness. It's a fruit in Galatians chapter 5. It is amongst the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Or the fruit of the recreated spirit. The Bible also talks about faith as gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Bible also talks in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 about saving faith and then the faith. We are talking about the faith that God has saved. We were saved by grace through faith. That's the faith we are talking about. It can grow and you can overcome by faith. Hallelujah. 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 In that Hebrews chapter 4, what we read with our text, they could not believe Moses. They could not believe Joshua. They could not believe Kelly. And the promise left them eluded these people. Why? The words they had never profited them. Now what God normally does according to Deuteronomy chapter 18 is to pick his people raise them up put his word in their mouth and they declare. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I read verse 18. This year God has declared a word to us. In verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name I will require it from him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. In this house, this year, God has spoken to us. And what did he say? I will hasten my word to perform it. Divine acceleration. That's the word that had been declared. If we don't believe it, if we don't act on it, 31st December will come and nothing would have changed around us. Why? Has God not spoken? He had spoken. Once he speaks, he expects the believer to pick that word and believe it and run with it and allow him to manifest what the word of God says. The word of God is a container of the ability to do what he says. It is the final authority. That is why John 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. There is no other higher authority than the word. And that is why the devil fears the word. That is why it is a potent, defensive, and offensive weapon in the hand of the believer. So God is saying, believe the word. I know many would have said, last year they said it, and nothing happened. This year they have said it again. That is doubt. Unbelief and doubt are the things the enemy uses to defraud us of what rightly belongs to us. With unbelief and doubt on every word God speaks to us, we cannot receive from heaven. And faith is the instrument that enables us to receive from God. I pray that none of us will doubt his word. They doubted and they did not receive. So the Bible refers to them as a profitable hearers. 
unprofitable hearers. And in James chapter 1 verse 25, the Bible also talks about forgetful hearers. They are in every generation. They are in every congregation. Unprofitable hearers and what? Forgetful hearers. But they didn't come to church this morning. I didn't hear your amen. They did not come to church this morning. So we will believe every word that God declares to us in this house and the word will come to pass. This word will come to pass in your life this year. In the mighty name of Jesus. Faith has two sides. I call it the two sides of faith. The believing side and the action side. If you believe the word of God and don't act of it, nothing happens. When you act on the word of God without believing, nothing also happens. So faith has two sides. The believing side and the action side. We believe with our hearts. And confession is made with our mouth. In Mark chapter 11 where we read... Jesus answering said unto it. Now Jesus was speaking to a tree. Jesus answering and said unto it. No man eats fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples had it. Now somebody that was close to Jesus listening to him talking to a tree. Could have imagined what was wrong with the master. But he understood that the principles of faith, the force of faith, the spirit of faith is released by the spoken word. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. We that have the spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Now, the word of God is released. Faith is released when you speak what you believe. You don't speak what you don't believe because it doesn't carry the power. You speak what you believe. When you believe the word for any situation and you speak it out, faith is released. And you believe once, according to Mark 11, 23 and 24. If thou shalt believe in thy heart. If thou shalt believe in thy heart. Heart is the center. It is the core of the believer. That is where things happen. Those are the places where we make declarations and they matter. The heart. No wonder God looks at the heart. He doesn't look on the outside. He checks the heart. Once faith is built up in the heart, the mouth speaks it out and the spirit of faith is released. What the believer then needs to do is to keep saying what he believed. If you can keep saying Mark eleven twenty three, 23, if you keep saying what you believe, if you remain consistent, there is no devil that can stop the manifestation of the word. Because the word is God himself. Verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall, now, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. In that verse, you see, he, we, hear, we see about three sayings and one belief. And I said, you believe once. But keep saying what you believe. If you can maintain saying what you believe, it's a matter of time because there is a time frame when you release your faith and when the manifestation will come. That is why when Jesus spoke to the tree, they were going, and I guess Peter will check, the tree did not dry up. 
They were going, Peter would check the tree was still green. But in the morning, it had dried up from the root. I pray this morning, by the instrument of faith, no matter the situation, whether it is health issue, whether it is family issue, whether it is financial issue, the word of God will go right to the root. It will dry this morning in the name of Jesus. I say it will dry this morning in the name of Jesus. The word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It can locate the problem in every human body. You believe, you act before you see. In Matthew 21 verse 22, in Matthew 21 verse 22, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be what? Done. Verse 22. And all things say all things shout it whatsoever you shall ask in prayer believing you shall receive all things all things no exception if you can just believe God's word and hold on to it irrespective of the contradictory circumstances, it will come to pass. It will be accomplished in the name of Jesus. In Mark chapter 10, the Bible said, from verse 46, Jesus was passing and blind Bertimaeus heard that he was coming and he had faith and he cried out, Thou son of David, have mercy. And they said, keep quiet. Even the nobles amongst us is not giving them attention. The Bible says, he cried out the more. Now faith does not respond to contradictory circumstances. It counters it. He shouted the more. And the Bible said, Jesus stood still. This morning, Jesus is passing this way. I said, Jesus is passing this way. If you can reach out, just like the woman with the issue of blood, and touch him by faith, that flow will dry up. I said, that flow will dry up in the name of Jesus. So don't wait to see before you believe. Believe, then you will see in the name of Jesus. What we are saying is active faith. In Joshua chapter 6 from verse 1 to 5, God gave them instruction. You are going to move around Jericho once every day for six days. On the seventh day, you will go around about six more times or seven. When they went around first, the Jericho wall was still standing. They went around six days. Nothing in the natural happened to the walls. Faith does not give up. Believers often give up these days. Faith must be tried. If it is not tried, it is no faith. The trials of our faith will work out something beautiful. That is why God is God because it has gone through what? Purification. What you are going through, you are coming out as gold in the name of Jesus but when they obeyed God's instruction and went round as instructed on the seventh day, the Bible said the wall fell down flat. I want to believe that wall sank because it was so huge that two horses can ride on the fence of that wall. So even if it has fallen down, it wasn't possible for them to just enter the city. The walls likely sank. What happened? Faith. In Luke 5, 18, 
We read about this man that his friends brought to Jesus, but there was no way to bring him into the presence of Jesus because of the crowd. And the Bible said they went up and released him down. When Jesus saw their faith, whose faith? Whose faith? Even the man had faith. So their faith means the friends and himself. Because later on, Jesus instructed him to pick his bed and go back to his home. And the Bible said he stood up. He had faith. The man did not look at the circumstance when he acted on faith. He just believed the word Jesus spoke and he stood up in the action of faith. The miracle is released. I say in the action of faith, the miracle is released. So as we leave this morning, you will act on what you believe. So faith can be seen by corresponding actions. When Jesus saw their faith, how? Because they acted on their faith. Faith can make a way. It does not see obstacles. If you can have faith, even in the midst of what you are going through, it won't be long. The manifestation will happen. And I want us to be on our feet this morning as we apply what we have heard as we pray. You can still believe God in the situations you are going through. You can still hold on. You can still believe the declaration that this year is our year of divine acceleration. It will become a reality in your life. I want you to close your eyes and begin to believe him. Cast every doubt. Cast every fear. Cast everything the devil wants to bring you away to deprive you of the reality of God's word this year. This year you are a believer. This year you will do the word of God. This year, vitally you will experience divine acceleration in the name of Jesus. I want you to talk to him and say, Father, I cast out every fear. Father, I am not a forgetful hearer. Lord, I believe your word. I am a fruitful hearer this year in the name of Jesus. Your word is my final authority. I work by faith and not by sight. As you make that declaration, the word of God will come true in your life this year in the name of Jesus. Let me invite as many that are not saved. The beginning is if you give your life to Jesus. If you don't give your love to Jesus, you cannot walk in faith. You cannot overcome. If there are those who want to be overcomers this morning, those who want to walk in faith, I want you to lift up your hands as we pray together. Lift it very quickly. Our time is up. If you want to walk in faith, if you want to believe God, if you want God to save you, quickly come. Come. I want to pray with you. First, you have to give your love to Jesus. He's the one that will change your heart and put faith into your spirit. Come very quickly. After today, you will now become a victim. After today, you will be a victor. You will be more than conqueror. Anyone, very quickly, come, come. Jesus is waiting for you. Come. This is the beginning of your walking in faith. You will be an overcomer. No situation will be big enough to overcome you. Can you come very quickly? Jesus is inviting you to come. He wants to touch your life so that you can walk in faith. Very, come very quickly. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. Jesus, come into my life and make me a new person. I make commitment to serve you all the days of my life. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. I will serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go with a reverend and she will share briefly with you. Lift up your hands as we pray. Father, we thank you. I've shared your word that you have put in my heart with your people. I've told them your word is the final authority. Your word is quick and powerful. I ask 
let there be a performance in the hearts of those that believe you. From this day, they will be more than conquerors. Do it for every one of us. At the end of this year, we will all return to give you praise for the actual manifestation of your declaration through your servant. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord.